in their first semester. Do you know how many minutes of financial literacy, of financial economics and understanding there is in the curriculum? Zero. And the majority of people receive their knowledge from their parents. Baby boomers, aren't we a great example? We are creating another generation of financial illiterates at our peril. So what is financial literacy? Financial literacy is the ability to use knowledge and skills to manage financial resources effectively for a lifetime of financial well-being. Education is the process by which people increase their understanding of financial pr products, services, and concepts so they are empowered to make the right decisions and inform choices and know the pitfalls and know where to go for help around their financial affairs. It's true that financially well-versed people are far more happy, are far more calm through this period of uncertainty than people that are not. And what is knowledge? Knowledge is power. When you do not have knowledge, you have what? You have fear. Because you do not know. You do not have the information at hand to allow you to make those rational, concrete, wise decisions. Never before have we had a situation where people need advice like they do today. Never before. They need good sound, well-informed, knowledgeable advice so that they can become empowered and knowledgeable about their financial affairs. The keys to financial literacy, again, are how do I manage debt effectively? How do I live frugally? Not, you know, cut everything out, but how do I live wisely within my means? How do I plan effectively for now and tomorrow? How do I have an emergency fund in case something unfortunate happens? I know I've seen friends of mine who did the baby boomer thing. They went out and bought a house that was way too big for them. They got into debt because they wanted to have the boats, the cars, all of the things. The only problem is when they invited you over for a barbecue, they asked you to bring your own meat. They were living a facade, they were living a framework that was not true. They were poor. They had the trappings of wealth, but it did not belong to them. I look in Oakville today, and after that downturn that we have, it's amazing how many two, four million dollar homes are going up for sale. Dozens and dozens and dozens. Our challenge, again, is to how to help people, even if they are in these situations now, to get out of it and give them the skills and the wisdom and the tools to ensure that they do not fall into these pitfalls and traps again that financial illiteracy creates for them, and that is financial serfdom. What can you do? You are the knowledge workers in financial advice. You are the people that have the skill sets, the knowledges, to be able to help people. We have a calling today as people who are financial advisors, who are financial planners, who are engaged in the financial services industry, to reach out to Canadians to educate them on financial literacy. Of course, governments can do anything they want. They can create national programs, they can send out brochures, they can do all of those things, but the true work of financial illiteracy happens at the grassroots level, in your own community, your own engagement in the political process. When you get home, write, mail, call, email your MPP and ask him, her, what their position is on education, on financial affairs in the high school system. Ask them that question. If you are asked to write articles, if you are a volunteer to speak, go to high schools. Frame yourself 
in a new way. Think of your business in a new way. You are in the business of edge. Thinking about, think about differentiation that you could have in marketing. When you would think about yourself as an organization, as an individual, whose primary reason for existence is to bring knowledge to people so that they can be secure, they can be happy, and they can be free because they have the financial literacy to make those decisions that they have to make with wise, informed people and ideas. You yourself need to take the lead on this. You need to seek the education that is timely and competency-based. You need to get designations that are the hallmark of your ability and your credibility. You need to belong to an association that has integrity, community, and knowledge at the forefront of what it does. You have to take this by the horns. You are the foot soldiers of literacy, and you must talk to your compatriots and your colleagues to engage them in this process. Because it is now that we have to do these things. You baby boomers, me included, We've left generations in the future with the bag. All you people born after 1963, point your fingers at those baby boomers that put up their hand and said, look what you've done to me. But we can't atone. We can't atone. Become teachers. Become knowledge workers. Transfer those things that you know to other generations to the people that you know, to help them have security in the future so that they can become financial literates. Because the sustainability, the health, the future of our nation depends on it. And there is nothing that we can do that is more important today as an industry and as individuals is to improve the financial illiteracy of Canadians. Because it is a cost that unites us all. Thank you.